Today I'm news about something that we've often heard or kind of seen in spy movies or in films and the saying is the walls have ears and I'm applying this saying to ourselves as parents you know we say so many things i mean mostly flippantly uh, you know while we're chatting and having fun and giving our opinion and talking about stuff and it's fine really but when you are a parent and when you have kids around i think the one thing that's really really come to my attention is that and i've been really self aware of this is that everything we say is being heard either attentively like consciously or subconsciously and somewhere deep down all that our kids are hearing not just from us but other kids around you know listening to us adults speak is not just affecting the way they they have an opinion on that subject but in the longer run deep down i think it's also affecting and shaping their personality you know for example when my daughter who is now 16 mishka uh, i think around the second or third grade she had uh, kind of started a little more advanced math and by advanced i mean not just here's a block and this is one and another block and this is two but addition or division or multiplication which started getting a lot more complicated than just simply counting numbers and i remember her coming home and not quite understanding what was happening and my first reaction was to smile and very uh, adoringly look at her and say oh she's just like me you know mishka don't worry because i hated math i did really badly in the subject it's kind of passed down to you so don't worry you're just like me now if you think about that i've already seeded into her subconscious that oh like my hero my father my influencer was terrible at math and he seems to be fine and doing well with life so it's okay if i am not good at math and yes because he's my father i'm her, i'm his daughter i will never be good at math here i was talking to her directly of course but when we talk to other people our friends somebody on the phone to my mom on the phone to my friends and talking about other kids and you're talking about oh but mishka is this and and i'm like no actually you know she's she's not very attentive in class or or no she's a little slow as far as non creative subjects are concerned but she's fabulous in creative subjects and I I'm kind of aware that she's around she can hear what I'm saying whether she's actually listening or no somewhere maybe deep down I was hoping she wasn't but I am so guilty of doing this very thing of making these statements about my child and she's hearing it and that's kind of forming her personality so today we muse about this the walls have ears our kids are all ears and it's not a bad thing it's good that they can hear what we're saying i think it's not a bad thing at all because the more we are who we are the more natural we are the less we hide the better it is but we need to be careful all right then so before we begin on this podcast a quick brief on what we're doing this podcast is about my musings as a dad about my kids about the things we do with our kids at the time of recording this my daughter is 16 my son is 11 and of course i have my wife too on the podcast and we discuss parenting the way we approach it and uh, i do know that a lot of us have similar doubts similar confusions and i hope that we can just bring these out into the open and talk about it so let's jump right into it and let the musings begin everything should be amazing kids are sweet and adoring but so confusing what to do just listen to dad musings right then we are musing about our kids being all ears let me give you a couple of scenarios right so uh, here's one scenario Quiet Arti mom's on the phone and to the caller she says you know she always needs attention just like her dad now think about the communication that the child in this case arti is getting she feels that her parents feel that she always need attention just like her dad situation number 2 oh don't mind aryav he's very shy these words are being said when somebody new has walked into the house and aryav is hiding behind you don't mind aryav he's very shy 
and Aryab is listening to this. He's hearing himself being labelled as very shy. Or put that knife down, you know, you shouldn't be touching dangerous things. Why do you always have to push the limit and not listen? Why do you always push the limit? If you actually took a moment off to think about these statements, what's happening is we are labelling the child, of course, through direct communication to them and somewhere they will start acting out or behaving like that. If I've said, why do you always push the limit? Either the child is going to say, oh my God, uh, I should not be or hey, that's how my parents see me push the limit. Wow, that's quite cool. You know, I was doing a little bit of research on this and it came to my eyes that like, for example, a three-year-old may not act like he's listening. But when his parents talk about him, his ears focus towards what they're saying because his parents are the most important people in his world and their opinion counts the most no matter what other people say. He may not understand the words they use, he may obviously not know the intent of those words, but he certainly feels and understands and intuits the emotion of whether they are approving of what he is doing and when they don't. Then that research says by around six years, if not before, a child overhears a compliment and treasures it. A child overhears criticism or an embarrassing moment and they remember it for a long, long time. Right, so just like you and me and adults, children don't want the whole world to know about their mistakes any more than we would want people to know about the mistakes we've made but we talk about them and their mistakes to other friends and especially if we are in earshot of our kids hearing and listening to what we're saying about them it's kind of going to affect them so it's really important that we think about this and try and put some perspective to what we say and how it's going to affect them in fact, research has also found that when children overhear your negative feelings about somebody or something else or about a group or whatever, they actually tend to take on those thoughts and feelings much faster and much stronger than listening to positive thoughts. So that too got me musing and thinking about even if I do tend to talk about somebody else or about a family member or about a friend, especially those that they know of, I may say a negative thing about them, but there is a context to it, but a child won't understand. For example, you know, if we were talking about a friend whose house we visited and so maybe that person ignored somebody and served something to somebody else. And I'm discussing that in that in the context of, oh, my God, that was such a terrible thing they did. And they should have known better and should have given this first to that elderly person instead of giving it to somebody else. And if my child is hearing that and is not mature enough to understand the context, they'll say, oh, dad doesn't like this person. And maybe this is not such a nice person. And therefore, I don't like this person. In fact, on this very topic, um, you know, I remember as a child, my elder brother and me, and we've gone to visit somebody and we are on our way back. And my mom would talk about, oh my God, you know, this happened and this is not what they should have done. And this was so embarrassing. And how could they have said this about so and so? And, oh, and you know, that's really something that I wouldn't do. And, and they would go on and on, basically dissecting what had happened. Now, as a child, and of course, they weren't talking to me. I was just a fly on the wall. I was just being all ears because I was sitting in the car. And I actually remember reaching home and thinking, ah, this is not a very nice person. And of course, I do know we'll be visiting them a lot more. But I don't think I like this person at all because my mom doesn't seem to like them. Now, it's tough for a child to understand context. It's tough for me to see things other than black or white. Either that's a bad person or that's a good person. And it was just that my mom or my parents were discussing it in the context of that particular situation. And it was really tough for me to understand and put that in context. And I do remember ending up not liking those people. And they were very nice people. And it's something that we are probably doing with our kids too. So it's really, really important that we kind of take note of that and remember it because I'm sure I too am doing it right now with my kids. But I'm got to be a lot more conscious about that. Right, so my daughter, Mishka, who's 16, her exams are still going on, so I just can't grab her and get her perspective on this topic for today. 
my wife aditi is out with my son kahan and he's at his drama class so i can't grab hold of him today <laughs> and get their perspective so we'll just hop straight on to what are the possible solutions or things we can do that will allow us not to make the silly you could call them mistakes so that the child does not get adversely affected by the things we say or the things we do especially when they are within earshot and are all ears i think one thing that stays with me very strongly is just like you have influencers on Instagram and other social media platforms and you look up to those influencers and see their opinions and kind of follow what they say we are influencers for not just our kids but for all kids who come in contact with us right so if we can just be very aware of this that we are their influencers and what we do is affecting and reflecting and subconsciously making them do those things then i think we'd be a lot more careful so for example if i say you know mishka and even jokingly uh, i hate maths you know she's probably absorbing that it's okay to hate math because my father hates it too and he's a cool person or it's okay to be bad at math because it's in my genes she's kind of maybe writing a script like that or if i all the time say if we go on vacation for example and you know one afternoon we're just sitting and whiling away time and i get up and say oh i'm bored i'm bored i'm so bored it equals to my kids oh it's okay to be bored and crib about it and cry about it and and throw a tantrum about it because my parents are doing that all the time so just be very very cognizant of the fact that you are your child and every other child around you you are their influencer i think that that automatically starts triggering a slight change in behavior another thing is of course like being an influencer means your behavior equals their behavior which means if we get into the habit of practicing what you preach or rather preaching what you practice you probably will always end up saying the right things because you literally mean it and you live it Right so let me give you some examples of uh, where our preach should be in line with what we practice. If you make a statement like you don't spend enough time at home with us. If you're wanting your child your teenager to spend time with family because family is so important you must do the same thing because if they don't see you doing that if they see you not spending time with family because you want to go out with friends or you're doing a lot of time at work I don't think there is any possible way that they will want to do the same thing because they are subconsciously learning from those cues and that behavior. Or if I if I tell my son, "Kahan, don't have soda. You know, it's filled with sugar. It's bad for you." And I tell him to have milk or water or fresh juices because it's a very healthy alternative. I should be doing the same. Because if I am sitting and having my drink, my rum, and filling it with uh, soda, you know, he looks at me and says, "But Dad, that's bad for you. Why are you having it?" And then I make the excuse and say, "You know, but I'm having a drink. Something you'll do once you're eighteen, perhaps." And it's just something that goes nice with this. He has that quizzical, questioning look on his face. But you've told me it's bad, and he tells me the exact same words. That's so much sugar going into your system, and I agree with him. But the fact is. my behavior affects his behavior and his values if for example i say you know pay attention to me when i'm speaking to you and i don't do that when they speak to me i'm on the phone or i'm doing some work or i'm typing away on the computer my words are hollow because i don't do the same i don't put my phone down when they come to talk to me why would their behavior reflect something else when i expect them to pay attention to me basically be an example be the influencer for your child i think it's the best thing possible another interesting thing that i would always be aware of is criticism of course either direct or overheard is bad for the child because they are hearing you tell somebody something about them which is even worse than you telling it to them directly because now you are criticizing them to somebody else so try and not do that and if you have something to say say it to them however also be really careful of constant praise because if they overhear you praising them all the time it helps them develop an inflated sense of self esteem and in the real world they just may not know how to function so 
whether you're criticizing, whether you're praising, and we all do it, myself included, just be careful because it's affecting them and both forms do affect them. General don't do's in front of kids is speaking poorly of other people, gossiping about, about other people, about things, making private comments, you know. Uh, we've spoken about this. It, they don't understand context. They see things as black or white, right? So if you genuinely want them to think about somebody in a certain way, that's what you're doing, right? Uh, another don't do for me is adult worries, money, time, emergencies, food. You know, these things I generally try not to discuss or pass on to them because they are not still really mature enough to kind of understand that. We, of course, talk to them about everything, but in context. And I definitely would advise this, speaking in front of children as if they are not there. I think that's a strict avoidable thing because, you know, labeling them, making comments about their physique or their intellect. You're talking about them. They are in the next room or they're sitting behind you. I know a lot of parents who do this. It's embarrassing. Even when I'm standing as a bystander and listening to it, it just feels wrong. They are people. They may be young, but they are impressionable and they are very intelligent. So, you know, talking to them like as if they don't exist or as, as if they're invisible, it actually has a bearing on their self-esteem. So, okay, there you are. That's our musings on our kids being all ears. Always remember, the walls now have even stronger ears now that you have kids or kids around you or kids in your house. Be responsible and, yeah, be that influencer in their life that, that helps them become a better person tomorrow. So if like me, if you're wondering if we are all doing the right thing for our kids and what's the best way to go about things, this is a good spot to be. And at Dad Musings, we bring out these, this stuff, we talk about it. I firmly believe there is no right or wrong, but there is direction. And we discuss those directions. Whether you agree with me, disagree with me, love for you to write in, get to my website, chintubhosley.com. And if possible, share an audio thought of yours. And I would love to have this on the podcast and have everybody understand how other people feel too. So right then, remember, if you are thoroughly confused and full of doubt with respect to the things you do with your kids, you are not alone. Oh my God, what is happening? Our kids have got us balding. Are you in the dark? Need some light? Subscribe to Dad Musings.